to fight alongside in solidarity. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten, who is here. <laughs> National Education Association Vice President Princess Moss. <laughs> I also want to thank the <clears throat> paraprofessionals and education support staff who are here today. Um, uh, thank you all. Catherine Mastronati from Springfield, Massachusetts, Stacy Taman from Calvert, Maryland, and Kyle Williams from Lawndale, California. Thank you all for being here. And all of you who turn classrooms, auditoriums, hallways, cafeterias, and school buses into safe, healthy spaces where students can grow and learn and thrive. You are why we are here today. As W.E.B. Du Bois once said, education is that whole system of human training within and without the schoolhouse walls which molds and develops men and women. When we give children a, sp a safe way to get to school, clean facilities to learn in, and diverse staff to support their learning and development, we are building that whole system that builds their future. We are building the next generation to dream up the solutions to the problems that we have not yet fixed. Yet for too long, we have placed the responsibility of turning educational opportunity into a reality squarely on the undervalued and overtaxed teachers, para professionals, and education support staff. We have asked you to do too little, too much with too little, supporting students as they learned remotely during the pandemic, maintaining clean, healthy schools and buses to keep kids safe, delivering nutritious meals and supplies to students' homes, and time and time again, you have showed up within and certainly without those schoolhouse walls. When I was a young man, after graduating from Boston College, I worked as a substitute teacher for one year in the Malden school system. I saw firsthand the hard and rewarding work that paraprofessionals and education support staff do on a daily basis. Paraprofessionals and education support staff are the paraeducators, classroom assistants, bus drivers, custodial workers, cafeteria workers, and others who are often the most diverse workers and the only heritage language speakers in the entire school. But instead of only counting on that dedication as a natural resource, we need to invest in the renewable resources that support these everyday heroes. It is sadly no surprise that nearly one in four schools have no teaching staff vacancies, uh, and that 331,000 school staff have left their jobs since the COVID-19 pandemic. 331,000 people have left their school jobs since COVID-19. Paraprofessionals and education support staff face low wages, poor benefits, and no job security. You should not work all week and receive a $0 paycheck one week per month because of health care deductions. You, you should not be laid off each year as the school year ends, left to wonder whether you'll have a job come this coming August. You should not have to guess whether you are a valued member of your community. We should not accept a manufactured underclass of school employees across our country. We should not expect strong schools and strong students unless we have supported well-paid staff. And that's why I'm so proud to introduce the paraprofessionals and education support staff Bill of Rights. Uh, <laughs> And, and I stand alongside of and in solidarity with the union leaders who are here today and are all across our country. 
This resolution is a call to action. It is a call for Congress to summon the political will to fight far-right, draconian cuts to public education and to give paraprofessionals and education support staff livable, fair wages. <laughs> Access to high-quality, affordable health care and benefits. The supplies and the training you need to succeed and to grow to support students, and the dignity of a safe and healthy workplace where you are empowered to negotiate for the working conditions you need and that you deserve because of the work which you are performing for that community that you are living in. When unions are strong, parents, students, communities are also strong, and their futures are stronger. We can only achieve our vision of schools as a place where all students learn, grow, and thrive when our paraprofessionals and education support staff have fair wages, benefits, and working conditions they have earned and that they deserve. This Bill of Rights is just a beginning. It is a commitment to make uh, to our paraprofessionals and education support staff for their futures as well. For educators, parents, students, and communities, let's fight together for what you deserve. This is the beginning of a national campaign to make sure that paraprofessionals get the respect, the pay, the health care benefits which they deserve. And we just have to take so many of these workers out of the shadows, the hidden figures in all schools across our country, and make sure they get the protections which they deserve as essential workers in our society. Let's just go and get them, and I'm now gonna introduce the great, the inimitable, Randy Weingarten, you know? I want you to come up first. That's okay, Senator, I love this. But I'm gonna have our, I'm gonna have our para go first, and then I'm gonna go. But I want to stand with both of you. Okay. And where is Stacy? Right here. And, 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 and Carl. And, right? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're all here. <laughs> so my name is Kathy Mastronardi, and I am the president of the Springfield, Massachusetts Federation of Paraprofessionals. We are the largest. <laughs> Go, Massachusetts. We are I'm, the I'm the interloper from New York. <laughs> <laughs> we like New York. My mom's from there. We are the largest paraprofessional only local in the state of Massachusetts, and we have been members of the American Federation of Teachers since 1980. I am proud to stand here today with my colleagues, school and college support staff from over 20 states. And together, we represent millions of hardworking professionals who work with our students every day. School and support staff all around the country invest in the students in their communities. Through our union work, we bring the light to life AFT's vision of real solutions for our kids and communities. The Springfield Federation of Paraprofessionals has invested in the children of Springfield by giving away tens of thousands of free books to our kids. We do this because we know that literacy is one of the real solutions for our kids. We want our kids to be successful, and we are very happy to provide them to those books because books are a real and tangible solution to literacy. Today we're gathered to discuss real and tangible solutions for school and college support staff in respect to fair compensation, benefits, and working conditions. It is a true honor to be here today with my senator, Ed Murkey, from the great state of Massachusetts. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> senator Murkey is a man who works every day to improve the lives of Americans with smart, common sense bills that provide real and tangible solutions. I am grateful to Senator Murkey because he believes in investing in us. He recognizes that our rights, respect, and dignity that all school and college support staff deserve. Thank you for your support, Senator Murkey. And now, it is my great honor to introduce my tireless union leader, 
who is constantly thinking of ways to make America's schools, colleges, and hospitals better places for everyone. Please welcome AFT President Randy Weingarten. Thank you, Randy. So I want, I want Kathy and Stacy and Princess and the Senator to stay up here with all these amazing people because, you know, I, I'm so glad to do this, and this is the reason I wanted Kathy um, um, to introduce me, um, Senator, because I remember a few months ago, it may have been longer than a few months ago, but the Springfield um, chapter, you, Kathy, we were having a really tough time with the management. You remember this? Yes. I remember it because we were always on Zoom still, so it may have been more than a few months ago. And what Kathy and Lauren is going to remember what I'm about to say, because as it's so, so, so important to have collective bargaining, which is part of this Bill of Rights, that um, is going to be introduced or is being introduced by Senator Markey. But there is so much we have to do. And sometimes, even when you have collective bargaining, you don't get the jumps that we need to get to make it a living wage. And, and, and there's just so much we can do unless we get those jumps. And I remember... Kathy and the Paras being so frustrated because they really, am I getting this right from that, those little Zoom boxes? They were really, they, they were there for all of COVID. They, they were in schools all the time. And there was a period of time during the beginning of COVID where Paras were just laid off, Paras and bus drivers. Remember, I know we have some bus drivers here, too. And then people were surprised that we had a bus driver shortage. Well, if you're going to lay bus drivers off any moment that there's a problem, and then they're really a shortage, and they're not going to be there anymore, why are you so surprised? Because you don't give them a living wage in schools or the health care benefits they need, or as Senator Markey just said, making sure there's a sense that they keep a job, not at a moment's notice they get fired, laid off. And so the reason, when, when you started doing this, Senator Markey, I started thinking about Kathy and that, those meetings. And look, we have people from New York here who, of course, I have to say something about UFT, but... <laughs> When we started bargaining for the paraprofessionals in the UFT, they made less than a dollar an hour, 35 cents, right? Say again? When we started. And look at where we are now. And it's taken a long time. But there's a para career ladder. And half the paraprofessionals become teachers. And we have retirement benefits. And we have health care. And we even have some leave. But we need to do this everywhere, regardless of whether we have bargaining strength. And that's what this bill is about. Because it's, it is really long past time that we say, yeah, really long past time. <laughs> Yeah, I did go to church this morning. <laughs> Long past time that we say people are so important, so important. They do really important things, and everyone here does really important things. I was a school teacher. I could not, Shelby knows this, you think I or any other school teacher in the United States of America to, could do their jobs without the support staff? The answer is a big no. And so part of what this is and why this is so important is because sometimes you can't get it all done on your own, even when we have collective bargaining. Just like the fight for 15 in terms of fast food, 
that couldn't get it done on their own. So having this kind of bill of rights, which is, yes, right now, we got to get it passed, and yes, right now, aspirational, but then could you imagine if we can get Title I to say, we need to make sure, we need to make sure there's a living wage. And so elections matter, and Senator Markey matters, and having President Biden matters, because this is a path towards dignity, starting with respect by having this kind of Bill of Rights. So I just wanted to say to you, Senator Markey, thank you for doing this. And I also want to say to all of you, when we did something in terms of a teacher Bill of Rights earlier in the year, Senator Markey was there. And Senator Markey said at that time, I'm going to have to do one for PSRPs as well. And he kept his word. So I just want to say, for all the paras that are in this room right now, and for all the hundreds of thousands of paras that we so um, gladly represent, then I'm going to inv in, um, introduce Stacy. This is about making sure that there's dignity and respect Amen. for the work that you do, righteous work every single day. And one of those righteous workers is Stacy Taman, who is a para educator and the president of the Calvert Association of Education Support Staff in Maryland. Stacy. Thank you. Hello. My name is Stacy Taman, and I am a proud education support professional from the great state of Maryland. <laughs> I have worked as a clerical professional in our public schools for 28 years and currently serve as the president of our local union, the Calvert Association of Educational Support Staff. I want to start by thanking you for recognizing school staff and bringing this resolution forward for a National Education Support Professional Bill of Rights. I don't think most people, we do, but most people outside of us, understands everything that goes into a day to make it successful for our students. As ESPs, which we call ourselves, education support professionals, what we do to make schools a safe and healthy environment for students to learn. Our bus drivers ensure the students arrive on time are often the first staff that our students see in a day. But I guarantee those bus drivers can tell you what kind of day those students are going to have as they step on the bus because they have built relationships. Our food service professionals prepare and serve healthy meals every day, breakfast, lunch, and sometimes dinner. But they greet our students by name. And they know about food allergies they provide another level of care. ESPs ensure that our schools and grounds are safe and clean, that the heat and air conditioning work, that the plumbing is functioning, and that we have safe drinking water. We protect sensitive information. We keep computers and laptops functioning and provide another layer of protection for our students, staff, and families through firewall protections. We manage health needs and provide life-saving measures through our nurses, and we connect in the classroom. The school day does not happen without us. I love what I do, and I know that my colleagues love what they do. We do our jobs because we care about students, each other, and public education. But working for a public school system and being paid by public tax dollars should not equate to living in poverty. That's right. That's right. That's right. One job should be enough. Amen. We deserve to be fairly compensated, feel safe in our workplace, and earn decent benefits and a retirement we can live off of. There are retired ESPs across this country 
who have to write a check to their previous employer every month because the pension check didn't cover the health care premiums. Every education support professional should earn a living that allows them to not just survive, but to thrive within the communities where we work and live so that we can ensure that our students and families have what they need to succeed. We must do something to address these chronic poverty level wages and benefits and unsafe working conditions. This resolution is a step to bring vital awareness to the issues education support professionals are facing in Maryland and across our country. And it supports the work that I am doing with my state union, the Maryland State Education Association, to build a statewide ESP Bill of Rights that I have a copy for you here. <laughs> What we really love about our ESP Bill of Rights is that we went around the state and we listened to our ESPs. And what is in our Bill of Rights, which mirrors the resolution we just connected, is that it reflects their voices. Their voices are being heard. And we will use it to drive towards solutions to improve the pay, benefits, and working conditions. Senator Markey, as an education support professional, I cannot tell you what it means to be recognized. Thank you for seeing us. <laughs> Livable wages for all school staff are long past due. I stand here today in support of this resolution and look forward to organizing support for the National ESP Bill of Rights. <laughs> Now, it is my honor to introduce to you the National Education Association Vice President, Princess Moss. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Princess Moss, and I am Vice President of the National Education Association. With three million members, we are the nation's largest labor union. I am also the proud daughter of two public school bus drivers. And I know firsthand what it's like when a family has to struggle to make ends meet because the job that they love doesn't pay a living wage. That is why I am thrilled to stand in support of Senator Markey's resolution for paraprofessional and education support staff bill of rights. And at NEA, we refer to school support staff as education support professionals or ESPs. More than 2.2 million ESPs work in our nation's K-12 public schools. Another 750,000 work in higher education across the nation. These professionals strengthen our schools and our communities. They make sure that our students are safe and healthy and ready to learn every day. ESPs also live in the communities in which they work. They are closely connected to students and families outside of schools. ESPs are parents, they're our neighbors, and they're our educators. Our schools could not run without them. Despite their invaluable role, ESPs earn an average on $10,000 below a living wage in every single state. More than one third of ESPs earn less than $25,000. Yet most pre-K through 12 ESPs have given an average of almost $300 to help students meet their needs. Because that's what we do, y'all. That's what we do. More than a quarter of all K through 12 ESPs are currently using assistance programs, and only 8% of ESPs who are laid off at the end of the school year are eligible for unemployment benefits during the months that they are laid off. This is shameful. Many of our ESPs work for benefits, yet it is not uncommon for them to pay their districts at the end of the month for their health care coverage because their entire month's salary wasn't enough to cover their share of the premium. The average ESP's work week is 34.1 official hours. 
although ESPs often volunteer for other school-based duties like helping with drop-off and pickup. This number that I mentioned is an artificial number and keeps many of them below the threshold for benefits. Despite their dedication to our students in the education communities, ESPs report that unsafe working conditions are a serious issue. Rising student violence, a lack of funding for mental and emotional supports for students, plus very little professional development leaves these dedicated essential employees vulnerable to student assault. And our ESPs are getting hurt. This must change. During the pandemic, <clears throat> our ESPs were on the front lines, serving our students and their families. And they're still there today, often underpaid and underappreciated. So again, we thank Senator Markey for his support. We urge Congress to pass this important legislation to help education support professionals gain the respect, the inclusion, and visibility they deserve, and the wages, benefits, and safe working conditions that they need. I now have the distinct honor of turning the mic over to one of those hard-working ESPs, Carl Williams. Carl is a custodian and president of the Lawndale Federation of Classified Employees in Lawndale, California. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Carl. Hey. My name is Carl Williams, and I am the president of the Lawndale Federation of Classified Employees in California, and I am a proud AFT vice president and co-chair, along with my colleague, Shelby Abram, of the AFT Paraprofessional and School-Related Personnel Policy Program and Policy Council. Senator Markey, it is an honor to stand with you today as you present this Bill of Rights. You know, our own AFT Vice President, our own AFT President, Randy Weingarten, stands side by side with us and props us up in support of the work that we do on campuses every day. Our work is essential to student success. A lot of the other speakers have spoken, but I just want to reiterate that we have food service workers with food insecurities. We have health clerks with no health care. We have IT techs who can't even afford internet service. We have registrars in our community colleges who can't afford to send their own kids to college. Hopefully, and I know that this Bill of Rights is a step in the right direction. This paraprofessional and education support staff Bill of Rights does exactly what the AFT is championing, and that is real solutions. We are championing the many ways we support kids and communities, and this Bill of Rights helps to fight for basic dignity, dignity for us and continue the work that we do for our students. The school day starts with us and ends with us. And we work every single second in between, in every room and in every closet and everywhere that they would have us work. We deserve a living wage. We deserve health care. We deserve to feel safe at work. And most of all, we deserve respect for the work that we do. We are essential to student success. And public education does not happen without us. Thank you again. So let's, uh, let's go get the co-sponsors, the members of the Senate. Let's just go out there. You know, call their offices. You know, let's let's get the movement going. Let let's have a resolution that we're going to ask everyone to sign on. And if not, why not? You know, why should there be uh, a second class set of protections, wages, health care, safety conditions for workers in the school in our country? Everyone is entitled, as you said, to the respect 
uh, that they deserve for the job which they are doing. So let's go and let's go and get this job done. Let's get the coast.